All right, everybody, no brewing video today, but instead we have a massive announcement and a massive upgrade. My system, as it is right now, is fine. It is a system that makes good beer very reliably, and uh, although it is a lot of work, it is definitely worth the effort, and I'm able to get consistency in everything. However, there is a part of me that really was itching for an upgrade. There's little things that are uh, not necessarily annoying to me, but are just impacting my brewing processes that could definitely be improved and uh, are not necessarily a huge amount of effort to do so. So what I've done is turned them into a huge amount of effort and compiled them all into one big upgrade. Well, I am going to basically be trying to build a sort of budget rims system from the ground up. Uh, as you can tell, I did get a pre-built PID, just I don't trust myself to wire that up and I don't really want to pay somebody to do that for me as well. RIMS is an acronym that stands for Recirculating Infusion Mashing System. So uh, essentially what that means is that during the mash, there is always a small portion of work that is being taken out of the mash tun into another vessel um, or a container of some kind and being directly heated by an electric element to uh, the temperature that is set by the controller and then put back into the mash tun. As a result, you're able to consistently keep a very, very precise temperature in the mash and you're also able to do a step mash and change the temperature of your mash relatively uh, quickly and very accurately. And that is something that I, I, I can't do. Um, at the system that I have right now, I simply cannot do it. You see I consistently lose four degrees or five degrees every mash despite insulating the hell out of my kettle. Um, and that is also something I'm not going to have to worry about once this is working. So I already have a heat stick that is a 1650 watt element that uh, is the major expense along with the PID controller in a rim system. So I've already cut half of my costs there. So what we're going to do is take my old venerable eight gallon uh, Brewer's Best kettle here that I used to use and we're gonna turn it into a hot liquor tank. We're gonna use it to heat a very low volume of wort in there directly using the ultra low density heating element uh, on that 1650 watt heat stick. It's not gonna scorch the wort because I've used it in the boil a hundred times. So I'll throw up some schematics real quickly on the screen so that you can see ex uh, exactly what the system layout is going to be. Uh, and I'm gonna actually videotape this process unlike when I built my kegerator because this is actually a build that's very much unique to me. Some of it is inspired by another uh, YouTube brewer called Terpsichorean Kid. Uh, he has a very interesting but much more expensive rim system that uses the same concepts. Um, so check him out if you want some inspiration on how to try and do this yourself. Um, so first of all, I need to drill a ball valve hole into this eight gallon kettle here. I have what's called a step bit here. So I can use my drill and uh, very slowly and carefully, we're gonna punch a hole in the bottom of the kettle for um, a ball valve. And we'll put that in so that we can recirculate from the kettle. So looking at the schematics now, I'm gonna use my mega pot. Because I don't feel like drilling holes into my really nice kettle, uh, I'm gonna use that as the mash tun. And then we're gonna take this piece of wood here and we're gonna mount what's called a Blickman auto sparge on there. The auto sparge is essentially a mechanical uh, control system that's able to maintain a consistent level of liquid in the mash tun that's important for this system to work properly. So at the bottom of my mega pot, there will be a ball valve, which will be gravity fed uh, into my hot liquor tank slash uh, recirculating heating tank type thing. Um, and, and inside of this tank, that is the eight gallon Brewer's Best kettle, uh, I will have my heat stick, which will be connected to the PID controller. Is it necessary to have a PID controller with a rim system? Most people say yes, because it has, uh, number one, the ability to handle a much larger output wattage, uh, which is necessary so you don't destroy the controller and potentially have electrical safety problems. Um, and number two, it has what are called solid state relays inside of it instead of mechanical relays. So when your normal temperature controller has a mechanical relay in it, that's a physical element that is switching on or off. A uh, solid state relay is actually able to switch on and off multiple times per second uh, and is able to do that safely over a long period of time. Uh, so 
This is also going to prevent us from overshooting any temperature settings that we set uh, because a standard controller would actually uh, just ramp things up, turn it on 100% until it reached that temperature, but, but then you'd have some thermal lag and then your temperature is going to go over that and then it's going to have to naturally come back down to that level before it actually evens out. So this is going to prevent us from having that problem. PID controller is going to be fed by information coming from a T-junction that I'm going to set up on the input of the auto sparge. So this is where the wort is coming back from being recirculated and putting, uh, being put back into the mash tub. Therefore, it's going to be the most accurate temperature uh, for the regulation of the temperature of the work. So, it's gonna go from the mash tun to the hot liquor tank, through the ball valve in the hot liquor tank to a pump, uh, which I have here. This pump is going to then bring it from the floor back up through the Blickman Auto Spurge to the mash tun once again. And I figured while I have a pump, I might as well make everything easy for myself. So I splurged a little bit and got a bunch of quick disconnects and high temp uh, silicon tubing. And we're gonna use that to make all of these connections and disconnections much, much quicker and much easier. And I'm hoping that in uh, the future, I will also be able to get a plate chiller to go along with this and massively improve my chilling process because it takes way too long right now with that tiny little immersion chiller. So that is the system in a nutshell. Uh, I'm gonna try and build it over the next couple days and then hopefully we can brew with it as soon as possible. Okay, so the only reason I'm doing this outside is so that I don't put steel shavings all over my floor. So first of all, what we're gonna wanna do is pick an appropriate height on the boil kettle to, uh, this thing is nasty. Ah, I should really clean that next time. Um, we're gonna pick an appropriate height on this thing so that we can drain properly, but not necessarily have too much volume in the kettle so that it takes a long time to reheat. So what we're gonna do is use this step a bit to get all the way up there, but uh, first we're gonna need a pilot hole so that we don't deform the metal too much. So first you wanna have your grill on uh, high torque, low speed mode, and uh, that way you're not gonna get the metal too hot because it will take a minute to get through this. Okay, so I got this bazooka screen for uh, my mash tun slash boil kettle because it's gonna be important now that we're trying to build a system that has the finest, clearest wort possible, uh, we're gonna wanna make sure that we have that all the time. So having multiple layers of protection is important. So this is gonna help filter out additional solids in the uh, mash and actually also during the boil, it's gonna help prevent clogged uh, pumps and stuff like that from hop debris. So we're gonna go ahead and Put that onto the uh, dip tube that I have in here. If you have a mega pot like I do, uh, be aware that the fitting on this end is actually not half inch NPT, just like the ball valve, but it is a different size entirely. So if you're like me and you buy an adapter for the uh, uh, bazooka screen, you're gonna find yourself out of luck and having to kind of jury rig it a little bit. Uh, so, that's why it's all twisted and mangled. After much struggling, the bazooka screen was successfully installed onto the ball valve in the kettle. So now we're gonna start adding disconnects to everything. All right, so I've got my uh, weldless ball valve connection in my dirty 
smaller brew pot here. So now that's that's set up with a quick disconnect on the end now, as uh, is always should be done with these sorts of things. Any sort of connection uh, with the threads should be Teflon taped a few times just to ensure a good seal. And just make sure you do that for every single time. Always tape the male threads going into the females. And uh, Teflon tape can be a little tricky to work with sometimes. Uh, so when you're done, just pull it off and it should disconnect nicely and you have a good and you have a good tight fit around the threads. So now I'm just gonna start putting disconnects on all the stuff that I need to put disconnects on. So we're gonna go ahead and put a ball valve and disconnect on this um, pump, first of all. But you always wanna put the ball valve on the output of the pump, uh, not the input so that you don't starve the pump because it's really bad for them to run it dry. In these pumps, the input goes into the middle, the output goes out the side. So the next part I'm going to set up is the thermo well and the T-joint for that. So we're going to have this T-joint here be the uh, part where the wort is going to be going back into the mash. There will be a, a, a Blickman auto sparge here, basically a hose that's going to go through. Uh, so it's not just jumping into the wort. But this is important here. We want to make sure we have an accurate temperature reading. So I've got this thermo well that's going to go here. A temperature sensor will plug, uh, will plug right into this probe slot right here. So um, I should probably Teflon tape that first. But <laughs> anyway, the temperature sensor is going to go in like this, and then our work is going to flow in through the bottom and out the side. And this is just the input for the auto sparge device. I'll actually explain a bit how this works in a sec. I won't. Okay, so this is the Blickman Auto Sparge here. This is basically, uh, it's like, a, like I said, it's a mechanical control system. So you have this float here, which is basically a toilet bowl float. So it's going to float on top of your wort level, and as your wort is draining, it's going to slowly move down. That action of moving down is opening this valve here, which controls the outflow from this tube, uh, which is going to basically start putting recirculated work back into the pot. So it's going to always maintain that constant level. Because as it goes up, it shuts that valve off, and as it goes down, it opens it back up. And you can adjust the uh, height of it as well, so depending on you know your liquid level in the mash tun, that's going to change each time. On the other side of this, I have my T-junction that you saw earlier, and I put the thermo well into it from this side, so where it's gonna come up this way, and go through, and uh, out this tube to recirculate. Why is it in a piece of wood, you ask? Well, I was gonna put this on my mega pot, but I like that kettle too much, and it's way too thick walled for me to drill through with my equipment. Um, I'd actually maybe need like a hammer drill, or a drill press, uh, so, uh, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to clamp this piece of wood to the side of the kettle instead, and we'll adjust the arm as we need to. As you can tell, my first attempt at making a hole didn't quite go so great. So this is what we have, and I think it's going to work fine. Okay, so this is the setup right now. It's a little kind of unrefined, but that's okay. All right, so we got our mash tun on top, and uh, it is going to drain through that ball valve down at the center there into the hot liquor tank there so i haven't set up the uh the heat stick yet but i will soon and we're just gonna get the pid figured out first but uh heat stick's gonna go in there and it's going to basically heat up the bottom of it um normally i'm gonna set this on something that actually can take heat though uh and then it's gonna flow through that line into the pump the pump then will pump it back up into the mash tun as you can see here, I've clamped the piece of wood to the side and uh, our thermal well is sticking out to the left and our auto sparge is out to the right and uh, well, we'll test this out with a water run in a minute, but first I'm going to get everything else set up. Okay, so please pardon the uh, disaster that my kitchen is, but this is what happens when you set up brewing equipment in your kitchen. So. 
here is pretty much how I think the system is going to run from now on out. So after many days of uh, coming home from work and leak testing and re-teflon taping and refitting and remaking the system, I think this is how it's probably going to actually work uh, for the foreseeable future. So starting from the electrical side of things, I have one GFCI outlet back there that is accessible in my kitchen right now. So I have the controller plugged into that. The uh, controller itself powers both my heat source and the pump, as well as having a temperature probe, which is hooked up to the uh, thermal well right here. So I picked up a different thermal well that actually fits the probe that came with this controller and everything's been working fine ever since. My uh, heat stick is also plugged into the controller and the heat stick is here in my hot liquor tank doing its job quite nicely. And last but not least, of course, my pump is on the ground here. Uh, the liquid side of things, and so this is my mash tun here, the large megapod. So inside I'm just running water through it uh, just to get the temperatures all dialed in. So water is flowing out the ball valve here in the bottom which is just being gravity fed into the hot liquor tank here. And it is coming in on the left, being heated by the 1650 watt ultra low wattage density heat stick element in the middle and draining out the ball valve to the right side where it is gravity fed into the pump and then being pumped back up into the boil kettle via this T-junction. So here, uh, the word is coming in, or the water in this case, is coming in the, through the bottom going to the right and out this tube here on the auto sparge. The auto sparge is set to maintain this level of liquid in the tank. Um, and if it rises or falls, the liquid level will change uh, accordingly. So with that, that's basically it. So it's basically been maintaining very steady temperatures. Um, I have had a deviation of plus or minus 0.1 degrees, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, it takes a long time to ramp up from one temperature to the other, but uh, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make since I don't really feel like getting a rims tube set up or anything more advanced than this right now. And I'm also pleasantly surprised to find that the kettle mounted thermometer uh, measuring the liquid temperature in the bottom correlates with the uh, value that's coming up on the PID display. So all things are good and I think we're basically finished with this considering it doesn't leak and it works as it's designed. So I am absolutely amped to start brewing very soon. So I'm glad I could uh, show you how that build actually went for me and actually take you through the steps that I took in order to make that system. I definitely encourage you to look into things such as rims and herms uh, systems in order to maintain a higher level of precision in your mashes if you want to attain that level of precision. Uh, Keep in mind, my system that was losing four or five degrees over the course of a single infusion mash was still making great beer. I just kind of was getting to that point where I wanted to get to the next level. So if that's what you want to do, uh, maybe consider this as a way of actually uh, making that happen. So anyway, at the time of publishing this video, I've actually already brewed with this system once and it is a joy to work with. It, it does have a couple kinks to work out and uh, there are definitely problems that are related to working with wort instead of water. Uh, that kind of leads to some tuning issues on the PID that I think I know how to fix. Um, but it still worked out beautifully and I ended up with some of the cleanest wort I've ever seen. And uh, a really, really nicely controlled mash temperature, which was really fun. So you'll see that video coming up pretty soon. But in the meantime, this is going to have to suffice for now. So thank you for coming along and as always if you liked the video please hit the like button that helps my videos and my channel become relevant to the YouTube community and uh, if you really like seeing this stuff more consistently please consider hitting the subscribe button. If you do hit it go ahead and punch that bell notification icon so you can know when I upload a new video every single time. To my current subscribers thank you for your support and I, as always I've really enjoyed talking about beer and brewing with all of you. So I try to upload a video roughly every two weeks or so, but if you're more interested in more frequently occurring content, please feel free to check out my Instagram. That is down here. That is at the apartment brewer. 
on Instagram. There you'll see more frequent updates, real time as to what I'm doing, what I'm brewing, and what I'm working on. And you won't have to wait for a couple weeks while I process the video and put things together for YouTube. And last but certainly not least, I've compiled a list of all of my equipment in the description box below to include all the equipment for this rims build and where I got it from. So if you're interested in making this for yourself, you can get all that stuff down there. I provided links to Amazon for it. Be advised though, if you do click on one of these links and actually purchase something through it, I will earn a very small commission. Uh, however, that does just go right back into this channel and support further brewing endeavors. But of course, please don't feel obligated to do that. Go through and research yourself what you need before actually making those purchases, just to make sure you get the right stuff. So I really enjoyed sharing this build with you all. Uh, if you have a similar recirculation system that you enjoy using, please let me know in the comment section below because I'd love to talk with you all about it. Uh, well, I'm going to pour myself a beer this time, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. So, cheers.